this has got nothing to do with not wanting sport to be for everybody and absolutely everything to do with sport being fair. So you can't turn around and say, well, we're still going to have fair sport for males, but we're not going to have fair sport for females. That's not right. We have to find a better solution. So, you know, I genuinely believe that we must have safety first in contact sports. Then we must have fairness. Then we find ways to be inclusive. And if that means that we have to create an open classification so everybody has somewhere to race, and that's what we need to do. But we should never throw in female sport under the bus. Here in the UK, about 12,000 people earn their living from sport. 11,000 of those are men. Mm. So not even a thousand of those are women. So you're, you know, that 1,000, which is a tiny proportion, are now expected to move over for people that are biologically male. If you have a green light, then obviously, you, you know, you're just going to attract people to be involved. And at the moment in an American cycling, for example, there's over 50 trans identifying males that are in female sports. Mm. And that's not on the world stage, that's just in, in North America alone. And this is actually taking people's living away from them as well. You know, we've, at the moment we've, we've got a cyclist who's earned $35,000 last year from racing, a male racing in events that were set up for women. So it's taking career opportunities away from females as well. And in a world where we're supposed to not have sex discrimination, this is exactly what it is.